Let me start uh, by asking one question. So 32, what is the number? 32 decreased to uh, 24 uh, in 1976 and then to 22 in 1991. Uh, it is 32 years ago. So as some of you uh, already know because uh, you already know my title, this number is the uh, gestational age when the fetus cannot live outside the mother's womb. Uh, in other words, uh, gestational age after when, after which, uh, the neonates can be resuscitated in Japan. Uh, last month, uh, in early afternoon, baby boy Liu was born uh, at 23 weeks of gestation by cesarean section. We, this situation usually happened at, uh, in our NICU, and since 2003, it is uh, 20 years ago, we have been resuscitating uh, brave viable infants who were born 22 to 23 weeks of gestation. We are managing these infants in Japan. I don't know the reason, but uh, recently I, we receive a lot of questions from overseas, like uh, Denver in the US, Melbourne in Australia, and Pittsburgh uh, in the US. Uh, thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic, we can easily have web meetings internationally. So as you can see here, what they really want to know is uh, how to manage this uh, premature, uh, to manage these premature infants, especially uh, who are born in 22 week of gestations. This is why I'm now standing here to uh, show you the management of these pay viable infants. This is a uh, recommended guidelines uh, in the developed countries. And in Japan, we don't have uh, any recommendations. This is the survey, last, survey conducted last year uh, showing that 50% uh, of uh, Japanese NICUs in 50%, in uh, the 22 weekers are uh, resuscitated. As I mentioned before, in our center, 20, from 20 years ago, we are uh, actively resuscitating 22 weekers. So what are survival rates of 22 weekers who are actively survived? This is a survival rate reported since 2000, 2000. So this is graph shows the uh, same survival rates side by side. As you can see, the survival rate in Europe around 40% and 30, around 30% 30 in North America and around 70% in Japan recent years. The recent survival rate in our center is 83%. So this, is, this slide shows the uh, survival rate of 22 weeks in our center. You can, as you can see, the survival rate of 20 weeks dramatically improved in these 10 years. From now, we are showing how to manage these periviable infants in two different ways. 
One is our experience in our center on management, management of 22 weekers. The second one is the result uh, from the survey from uh, Japanese NICUs uh, conducted the last years. Uh, at first, this is the umbilical cord management in our center. So umbilical cord milking is performed to all 22 weekers, except for uh, data missing cases. Delayed cord clamping is not performed uh, in our center. So in Japanese, other Japanese centers, in 90% of Japanese niches, umbilical cord milking is performed, but uh, very rare centers is a delayed cord clamping. So and umbilical cord milking is performed by neonatologists after umbilical cord clamping in 80, more than 80% of Japanese NICU. In terms of respiratory management uh, during resuscitation in delivery room, all 22 weekers were intubated and uh, time from Delivery to intubation, median time is three minutes, and the size of endotracheal tube is 2.0 millimeter or 2.5 millimeters. Surfactant replacement therapy were given in 93% of infants. How about in Japanese benitudes? In 57%, babies were intubated soon after heart rate recovery with mass back ventilation. And most of NICU's flow inflating bag is used for resuscitation and the surfactant replacement therapy are uh, done in 62% of Japanese NICUs. So after resuscitations, uh, can mother and the babies meet at, in the delivery room? Almost uh, mother and infant can meet. In 37%, mother just see, can can see, and in 57%, mother can touch her baby with her hand, and in 4% of NICUs, if the mother and baby is stable, kangaroo care is provided. Very immature skin is the, one of the causes of uh, bacterial or fungal infections, which can lead to neonatal death. In our center, uh, skin care is managed by nurses with uh, many uh, staff you can see here. Uh, I don't have enough time uh, today, so I cannot explain each of them. So please ask our nurses later. This is the uh, picture of a uh, baby you I presented after umbilical cord line insertion. In addition to the uh, umbilical cord milking, neonatologist performed ultrasound is unique for uh, to treat uh, to manage 22 weekers in Japan. As you can see, cardiac ultrasound and head ultrasound are performed one, two, three times a day 
during the first, during the first three days. And once a day, from day four to uh, day seven, by a neonatologist. This is the echocardiographic indexes we use. Most, in most Japanese centers, these index, it's related, it, they are related to uh, patent tractus arteriosus, PDA. And in some NICUs, uh, they measure the index of cardiac afterload to determine uh, to use if to, to use vasodilators. As I mentioned, uh, we are free, we are doing, we are performing frequent uh, echocardiograms and use a dopamine and dopamine uh, in uh, about 90% of patients. And in other Japanese NICUs, about 60, in, about in 60 percent of NICUs, steroids, dopamine, dopamine, and volume loading are used to maintain blood pressures. In respiratory management during acute phases, we usually start with conventional mechanical ventilation CMV and change it to high frequency OCT. HFOV, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. HFOV after uh, first three days, when after decreasing the risk of IVH intraventricular hemorrhage. In contrast, in Japanese NICUs, the, it is that almost same. SIMV is firstly in, introduced and gradually change it to the mode of HA4V. After a first week of life, in 60% of NICUs, HA4V mode is used uh, for respiratory management. In terms of sedation, sedation is used for almost all 22 weekers in our center using phenobarbital to uh, prevent IVH. In Japanese NICUs, in 74 NICUs, sedation is used using a fentanyl. It's the most frequently used drugs followed by a phenobarbital. So I will finish my talk by uh, showing the gastrointestinal management. Probiotics is used for more than 90% of infants after day two to 36 weeks of uh, PMA. Now the, in Japanese NICUs, 90% of NICUs probiotics is used, but prebiotics used such as oligofructose are rarely used in Japan. How about the enema? Glycerin enemas are used uh, for all 22 weekers at least three times a day after day three, when IVH uh, often occurs. And in Japan, other Japanese NICUs, in 86% enemas are, is used. But the starting date of enemas are varied NICU to NICU. For families, for families who have 22 or 20 Three weekers, I gave a uh, video and pictures for my presentation. Uh, please take a look for a file. Do they look happy? <laughs> so, to be honest, I don't know because we physicians uh, meet them only for a 
very short of time during their hospital visit. So two of four looks intact survivors uh, without any impairment so far. But one boy has have a tracheostomy and needs a CPAP or mechanical ventilation. And one girl cannot walk by herself and needs significant help by uh, her families. So today I talked how the survival rate of periviral infants is excellent compared to uh, other countries. But as you can see in the light graph, the rate of severe neurodevelopmental impairment in the eye is increasing in 10 days. So now our discussion is shifting to improve survival rate to survival rate without any impairment and improving the quality of life of such a tiny babies and their families. Thank you very much.